Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Andy Murray from What Culture. And coming up today, we're going to talk about Kevin Owens, well, putting Jackson Riker in his place on social media after a rather questionable outburst last night. We're also going to talk about the WWE legend who almost ended up managing Matt Riddle. And we're also going to talk about how the tapings went for the cinematic match between Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream. Plus, WWE have released Rob Gronkowski, finally. Notes on the greatest wrestling match ever that doesn't involve Edge and Randy Orton. And a really weird story about Bray Wyatt and Sid Vicious. This is the news. Right, let's kick things off by talking about this Jackson Riker situation. It's everywhere at the moment, and understandably so. So last night, Jackson Riker of the Forgotten Sons tweeted... Thankful for the at POTUS we have, President of the United States. Uh, God bless America, built of freedom, forgotten no more. Which is the catchphrase of the Forgotten Sons on Smackdown at the moment. Now, okay, questionable taste, right? Straight away, I mean, that phrase I've just used there doesn't even do it justice. But we have Kevin Owens quote tweeting, coming along saying, The freedom you speak, you speak of entitles you to speak your mind all you want. I'm not here to argue that. I just really need to tell you that I think you pushing your wrestling catchphrase as all of this is happening is absolutely effing pathetic. Good night. Uh, another one here from, there's all kinds of responses to this, but we've got another one here from Mustafa Ali uh, saying, I'm thankful you posted this because I'm now aware of what you stand for when black brothers and sisters are crying. You praise somebody that refuses to acknowledge their hurt. Steve Cutler, uh, Jackson Riker's own stablemate chimed in and said, no, um, essentially, uh, we've had Jackson Riker's sister uh, objecting to this on Twitter. What has happened here? Jackson Riker has taken a delicate, horrendous real life situation where people are hurting, people have died, uh, people's health and civil liberties and everything is at risk. Terrible things going on across the planet at the moment, particularly in the United States, following the death of George Floyd. He has taken all this and tried, by the looks of things, to generate pro wrestling heat from it. Now, there are certain things that you don't touch when you're trying to generate heel heat, or I don't know, maybe this is Jackson Riker speaking out of character, who the hell knows? This is one of those things that you don't touch with a goddamn bar. What was he thinking, Adam Wilborn? And, you know, I cannot argue with a single word that Kevin Owens has said in reply here. You have the freedom to say whatever the hell you want. However, mate, this is repulsive. Yeah, I woke up this morning and genuinely couldn't believe what I was reading on Twitter when I saw he tweeted that. Look, I get it. You may argue, it's a tough argument to make, but some may argue, well, you know, sometimes pro wrestling utilises real life situations, even some of the darkest real life situations, to inform their storylines. But like you said, don't go anywhere near this. And I don't, I, I genuinely can't decide whether he's so dumb that he thinks, yes, this is a time to promote my wrestling storyline, or he's so dumb because he thinks this is a good time to promote my real life persona as supporting this dreadful situation that we have right now. Awful, awful stuff. And yet again, if you're on Kevin Owens' side, you're probably on the right side of history. Yeah, I, I just cannot fathom what was going through this guy's head. It's just... I mean, it, it's terrible. I, I, I respect Kevin Owens' reply here because he's like, look, you can you can say what you want, but this is absurd. Um, Mustafa Ali as well, like very reasoned, very, very well explained man. Like, just don't capitalize on this stuff. Don't even try. Don't even let that thought cross your mind, man. This is a delicate, sensitive, important, world-altering situation. You should go nowhere near it if you're a professional wrestler trying to generate heel heat. It's... It's terrible. And what does that say about you as a human being, man, if you think that this is fair game for a storyline? It's mental. Yeah, I think you've got to take, you know, take the lead from some of your fellow superstars in the locker room and legends around you. You know, even some of the biggest heels in wrestling right now recognise that this is separate than what's going on in, in their company or in their, in their storylines or whatever. You know, it's fine if you're the biggest bastard on the roster, if you want to donate to an issue, then people will separate that in their mind from you, you know, beating up your best mate on television or whatever. But the opposite does not apply here. People will remember this 
Um, and as you say, it's generated a whole lot of heat in the locker room. It's going to be very interesting to see how WWE handles this situation going forward. Not just arguably with Jackson Riker, but generally with their whole roster of talent if they decide to comment on this issue. Because this could get very complicated very quickly for WWE. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not even, this isn't heel heat now. It's just, you're an idiot, go away heat. And, you know... I'm at a loss for words now. I cannot believe I woke up to read this, honestly. Like, and Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali are right to put him to task. Even his own sister and his own stable mate, for God's sake. Yeah, that's when you know. You shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have tweeted this tweet, and then you should have probably deleted this tweet as soon as you tweeted it. Yeah. This ain't it, Chief, I think is the phrase. There you go. Right, let's get back to some pro wrestling, good old-fashioned bollocks, because that's what we need right now. <laughs> um... Our truth is your 24-7 champion again. He's like, what is this, the 36th title reign of his or something mad like that? He won it. Or oh, we saw footage of him at least winning it on last night's Monday Night Raw, rolling up Rod Gronkowski whilst he was, I do believe, trying to make some sort of TikTok video, Andy Murray, and his mate something. just happened to be wearing a referee shirt. Regardless, that's not necessarily the biggest story right here, although I'm glad that the 24-7 Championship is hopefully returning to TV more often as a result of this. Give it back to the inaugural champion. But WWE have come to terms on the release of Rob Gronkowski. This was broken last night by Wrestling Inc.'s Raj Giri uh, after last night's Raw had aired. Now, this doesn't necessarily rule him out from sporadic appearances. That's still potentially on the cards. But I think we all knew this was coming as soon as Rob Gronkowski signed for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That was actually one of the parts of his contract that he had with WWE. If an NFL team came in for him, he could leave the WWE. I suppose it was just working out the issues surrounding WrestleMania and then obviously want to get some headlines by putting the title on him. I reckon what's happened here, Andy, is he's won the title. They've given to him at WrestleMania. They sort of knew what was going on with Tampa Bay. And they thought, you know what? If we play our cards right, we could, I don't know, pin Rob Gronkowski during a game. And the NFL and Tampa Bay went, no, you bloody won't. Just get it off of him in his back garden, which is exactly what they did. Yeah, this is crazy. So Rob Gronkowski spent 10 weeks as a contracted WWE wrestler and guess the SummerSlam match is out of the window now as well. All I want to know is, has somebody checked on Mojo Raleigh? Because his meal ticket just went flying out the window. Yeah, what a crazy... You'll look back on this Gronkowski situation 10 years from now and go, did this really happen? Like, what movie are we living in in 2020? This is just... Let's move on. All <laughs> like... I know is, this is going to provide an answer on the hashtag bloody good quiz on WrestleCulture in years to come. Don't forget to download our podcast, What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, let's move over to uh, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle's coming to SmackDown and he's almost he almost came to SmackDown with a manager. Who was that manager going to be? Kurt Angle. Uh, Kurt Angle has spoken to CBR.com about the situation and says he was offered the opportunity to manage Riddle on SmackDown, but he said no. He turned it down because, in his words, it just wasn't the right time. He did, however, have plenty of praise for Riddle. He said that he thinks he's going to be one of the faces of WWE. He has all the ability. His personality is great. At first, it's a little bit odd, but once you get to know him, he's very likable, and that's what he's going to get from the fans. They are going to love this kid. Uh, Angle refereed uh, Riddle farewell match in NXT versus Timothy Thatcher last week. He introduced him sort of via promo on SmackDown last week, so he's endorsing the guy, but he's not going to be managing him. I think that's the right move for me. Matt Riddle's a very good talker on his own. Don't think he needs Kurt Angle services. No, exactly. You're spot on there, Andy. I think WWE made the right decision here. I think having him, as you say, intro, endorse Matt Riddle on SmackDown rather than just sort of having him appear. And obviously the NXT crowd would pop for him, but fans at home might, if you don't watch NXT, might be like, who's this surfer dude? But now you've sort of introduced him right, like you say, he's a sensational talker. He doesn't need a manager. He needs to be world champion within a year, in my opinion. He is the best thing WWE has, and he's on the perfect brand for it. They've, so far, I realize we are, what, uh, four days, five days? <laughs> into his run on SmackDown, but they've nailed it so far, so credit where it's due. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, the best four-day run in history. <laughs> Don't screw this up. Uh, right, let's talk a little bit more about SmackDown. Uh, of course, we saw the Intercontinental Championship Tournament 
Uh, take another twist this week on SmackDown. Jeff Hardy arrested, then came back and cost Sheamus that weird match he had with Daniel Bryan. It means we're going to get AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan. Not at Backlash, as many people like myself assumed, but actually on the SmackDown before Backlash, which is the 12th of June. And they've already taped this, of course, because of what WWE is doing right now. And it is an absolute Banger, according to reports. Uh, they filmed uh, this as part of their mass tapings, as I said, uh, and sources within the production have told Fightful that the quality was, in the words of JR, unbelievable. <laughs> Um, it legitimately pumped up a very tight performance center crowd that was there to cheer. I can't wait for this, Andy Murray. Yeah, it's good to hear this because, like, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan are obviously like two of the greatest in-ring performers, pure in-ring perspective of all time. Um, but the thing is, when you're wrestling on television, there are certain shortcuts and certain finishes and other things that come into play because they want to preserve rivalries and build to bigger matches down the line and stuff. So you're not always guaranteed um, a great match on Raw or SmackDown or, or Dynamite for that matter uh, when they just put two really good wrestlers together. On this occasion, it sounds like they've given them time. It sounds like they've given them a bit of freedom and the opportunity to showcase the full breadth of their skill set. I love their previous matches. The Royal Rumble one wasn't as good. Um, I don't necessarily think that it fit the tone of that evening at Royal Rumble 2019, but the matches prior to that were all tremendous and I have no doubt that this is going to be a ripper. Can't wait for it. Speaking of matches we can't wait for, how about Adam Cole versus Velveteen Dream? It sounds like we're getting another cinematic affair. Uh, got another report here from Fightful on the tapings of how this thing went down. Sounds weird. Um, they basically said that the match was filmed outside at night with a massive circle of cars surrounding the fight. Their headlights were lit up, they were illuminating things while the wrestlers fought. Uh, there were gathered developmental wrestlers around it to create noise. There was a bit of friction there, however, as it rained uh, while they were trying to tape. This prevented them from starting at 7pm. They were going all the way beyond midnight, so there was a little bit of, I should be in my bed, damn it. Um, people were a little bit rankled there but by the sounds of things it's going to be another unique cinematic affair uh, this is in line with what William Regal said about finding a location befitting the situation and you know the size of the match looking forward to seeing how it pans out sounds weird yeah, weird, wonderful, looking forward to it. I'm slightly concerned because the NXT parking lot has been an issue for quite some time, including more recently. Loads of people getting kidnapped by those weird masks wrestlers. Let's hopefully that, suspect that doesn't happen. I really hope... Did that do anything for me? No, okay. <laughs> well, I hope that when Velveteen does, does Dream does that, some of the car headlights turn purple. Just simple stuff like that. I'm excited to see what they do with it. I'm buzzing for In Your House on Sunday. Um... Yeah, cinematic wrestling. More, please. Love it. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to talk about the weirdest story of the day without question, though. Centering around Bray Wyatt and a feud, granted whilst Bray was a child, with Sid Vicious. He took to Twitter yesterday to recount this incident when he was in a WCW locker room. Uh, he tweeted, part one, true story. When I was a kid, I was playing in a WCW locker room somewhere with a brand new Rocketeer toy. Psycho Sid Vicious thought I was being too loud and I was annoying him. So I shot him the bird like a man and he promptly destroyed my Rocketeer toy. Uh, he goes on, explains that one of his friends bought him a new Rocketeer toy 30 years later to restore his faith in humanity. And he ends the tweet, guess what, Sid? I'm the man now and you still suck. <laughs> Is this a feud we're getting, Andy Murray? Yeah, who says that professional wrestling organizations don't do long-term booking anymore? This is three decades old! Uh, presumably would have went down while Bray's dad, Mike Rotunda, was working for WCW. Uh, I guess we're getting Sid versus The Fiend, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> that's my take on the matter. Yeah, that's because... Articulate. Well... It's because I've got half the brain that you do as well. <laughs> I can't wait for Sid's reply. Oh, let's have a promo <laughs> off. Oh, right, let's mate. move on to today's Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us. Solomon for eyes. Apologies if I butchered that name there. It starts us off today saying, Currently the Raw and SmackDown openings end with Seth and Roman. Yes, of course. Roman punching the floor, Seth going, whoa. Uh, I think a small change WWE could make is to have the openings end with whoever is the current world champion on the show. What small changes do you think WWE should make? Ooh, 
there's there's quite a lot but for me like small changes come down to anything that seems these makes these people seem less human and there's quite a lot of examples of that but for me uh the the angles that they watch the tv at um is a big one uh <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing to your poor necks, you bunch of silly sausages? Anything that makes these people feel less like robots and more like human beings, let's do it. See, I was going to say, get Jerry the King Lawler off commentary, but they appear to have done that, so I'm kind of happy with that. Um, yeah, I mean, Simon Miller devotes an entire portion of his show to how people talk. So yeah, like you say, just have people talk normally in sentences they would say and get rid of all your stupid bollocks rules about this word's not allowed, this word is allowed. But also let us know in the comments because I feel like there's a podcast brewing here of small changes WWE need to make. You know, I'm not going to go the whole hog and say unscripted promos because that's, that's a pipe dream. Um, but let us know in the comments what small changes you think WWE should make. Second question today comes from Lincoln Jack, regular contributor, who says, Howdy lads! My question is, why does a multi-million dollar company like WWE find it hard sometimes to follow in the footsteps of other wrestling promotions? E.g. AEW with the crowd, a New Japan with huge pay cuts, but no releases. Um... These are kind of two separate issues, but with regards to like the AEW thing, I genuinely think, and this is just me speculating, that Vincent Lamb looked at this, went, oh, that's a good idea, but you know, if we do it the same week or whatever, or a couple of days after, we'll be seen as copying the smaller company. We can't be having that. Let's leave it off for a month or so, and then we'll do it. And I think that's part of it. I think there's a little pride, little legal thing there um, with Vince. With regards to the, the New Japan situation, I just think that WWE are greedy corporate bastards, basically. <laughs> hmm. That's my take on that one. Yeah, I do think that they are informed by not only other promotions, but fans' complaints referencing other promotions. And, you know, you could argue that maybe they were going to do what AEW was going to do, but they, they thought that their safety, you know, was paramount. And But actually, you know, that's bollocks, because we all know that the... the checking that they've been doing has been let's just say inadequate not that aw has been much better in terms of abiding by the rules so yeah i think it does just come down to don't you don't want to be accused of being aw light or just following in the footsteps whereas fans aren't really that asked if you're a wwe fan you're going to be a wwe fan even if they copy aw because yeah. you think they're going to do it better so yeah don't stand on ceremony, boys. If something is obviously improving wrestling in another yeah. promotion, steal it. Yeah. That's what I say. Uh, final question today comes from Big Joe 83 uh, talking about CM Punk, saying, if CM Punk does return, would you like to see him in a, with a new stable? How good would a stable be with AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, KO, Sami Zayn, and CM Punk. That stable is absolutely stacked and it's kind of like the stuff of dreams, but I think if, if CM Punk comes back, I'd kind of like to see him on his own. Um, I think that'd be the angle to go because, you know, for the past six years, it's kind of been him versus the world. And I think that would be fitting in a storyline if it was just him. Uh, although your stadium lineup is ridiculously stacked. Yes. Now I want that stable to be a thing and I'm probably going to go and create it on 2K at some <laughs> point, but... Uh, yeah, I think he'd be better off alone in the words of Alice DJ, I do believe. <laughs> and um, I've completely lost what I was going to say. Yeah, do stuff on your own first, Phil. Uh, right, final question. No, sorry, let's move on to today's and finally. And just a... Just something nice for today's and finally, rather than a stupid photo or anything like that. Uh, Big E is auctioning some signed uh, boots of his off on eBay uh, as part of a GoFundMe campaign for a Vietnamese restaurant in Tampa that unfortunately burned down. If you want to go and support him for that, the boots look amazing. It's Big E, so you know it's good stuff. Um, they are currently... Bid. Oh, flipping out. The current bid is $700 on eBay. The links to all of it is on Big E's Twitter page. Go and check that out. Uh, go and do something nice and get yourself some amazing uh, wrestling memorabilia whilst you're at it. Uh, everyone's going through a tough time, I realise right now, but if you can spare any money to support people who are truly, truly suffering, it really would be appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Today's message, simple. Jackson Riker, bad. Big E, good. Who'd have thought it? 
Who would have thought it, eh, Andy Murray? Let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comments section below. And as I said, don't forget to let us know the small changes that you would make to WWE. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, and make sure you join us live at 4pm today here on YouTube where we will answer all of the WWE... Kurt Angle's been mentioned in the news, so we have to do his impression, apparently, of saying WWE. All the WWE questions you want answered uh, at 4 p.m. today with myself, Adam Nicholas, and Adam Cleary. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. While you're there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at... At Andy H. Murray. The H today stands for delete your account, but with a H. So, delete your account, right <laughs> Hey. You delete your account, I said. Hey, you. That almost worked. That'll that do. Almost fit. That'll do. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.